Hey, I'm Reverend Yolanda. She, her, her pronouns. I um, am a trans, femme, genderqueer uh, storyteller. So I am not uh, creating a character. I am Reverend Yolanda. And I've been with Drag Story Hour since the very beginning here in New York City. So maybe six, seven, eight years, however long we've been here. <laughs> So, I am a trans femme, gender queer, singer songwriter, storyteller, and interfaith minister. I really am a reverend, and my legal name is Yolanda, so I'm not creating a character. My name is Reverend Yolanda, whether I'm dressed like this or some other way. <laughs> okay. My favorite question so far from kids has been Are you a sicko? <laughs> <laughs> because I was wearing my butterfly outfit and I had yellow rain boots on. And my answer was, because I like them. Stop talking. Step away from the children. We are back. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. And I hope you guys are ready once again for another dose of brain aids because that is exactly what you're going to get after watching today's episode of Woke TikTok Fails. TikTok mm. is degenerate trash. Uh, Correct. Everything woke turns to okay. It's true. It's true. It's true. I mean, there's really no argument against that statement. Anyway, thank you guys so much for coming back. Now, if you would place your attention on the screen really quickly before we dive into it, um, this is an article that just came out uh, today, and it said, "Now, I've been saying if I've I don't know for how long in these videos that." They're promoting unhealthy habits, unhealthy lifestyles, unhealthy behaviors. And so we get this article. Fans praise Disney's first ever plus size heroine in new in new film. So I don't know what film this is. I don't know who the character is, but Disney has come out with a plus size character. Okay, whatever. I mean, D Disney's had plus size characters before, I think, right? I don't know. I don't pay attention until they start promoting it. And then everybody praises it. Why? Oh, wait. Was she a great big fat person? Well, no, no. It's, it's not a real person. That was an animated Disney character that they came up with. This is a real person. Oh! <sighs> Uh, are you kidding? Uh, Holy cow. <laughs> now that was a real person. Oh boy. You see, what did you it would have been just fine if they didn't do that, if they didn't make that character. However, the whole diversity, equity, and inclusion agenda that I've talked about many times here on this channel um, is that they have to include somebody from each of their marginalized groups, as they call them. And I guess plus size people to them is, I don't know, the comment says, well, if you're queer, you're going against the word of God. At least you're not like that chick who said Jesus is queer. This should be interesting. Roll the film, please. Yes, at least I don't say stuff like that. God is non-binary. God is queer. God is autistic. Let me we love us a gay Jesus. Praise the Queen of Kings. See, it's only bad to say that stuff if you think it's wrong to be gay, which it's not. You're wrong to think it's wrong to be gay. You're wrong to condemn people for being gay. Once you accept that God invented queerness, you can celebrate God's own queerness and the love and dedication and passion God has for the queer community. I hope you can get there one day. Jesus is queer. You know, it's amazing. You are 100% wrong. I mean, nothing you've said has been right. Okay, you little pimply little... Mm, mm, mm. Wow, okay, these next two clips um, kind of go hand in hand, and their teachers, shocking, shocking, I know, I know, uh, I still don't understand 
any of what this person says, how it has any re relevance to the students, why this, any of this would ever, I gotta calm down a little bit. We'll just roll the film, please. So the question is about coming out to students, and as a teacher who has worked with elementary, middle, and high school aged students, I think I can help you out a little bit here. The first thing you should do is just keep your language simple, because this teacher specifically is working with elementary school kids. You want to use language they're going to understand based off experiences they have. Just say something simple like this. Here's what I said. I used to be a boy, but that made me hurt. It made me feel uncomfortable. So I went to a doctor. We talked. Now I take medicine, and I'm a girl. Boom. There you go. That's all you really need to know. It's not a perfect explanation. If you're not on hormones or you don't want to take hormones, it's not the best, but it can be a really good starting point. If you're not on hormones, I would just say that your doctor and you decided to do things like this and it's going to be what's good for you to make you happy. Kids understand that. Generally speaking, kids like making people happy, you know? Now, you may see some purpose in going more in depth later on, but starting with that foundation is good for people. It's a man, baby! Well, I thought she was a man. She is rather mannish. If that is a woman, it does look like she was beaten with an ugly stick. I <laughs> just imagine the levels of narcissism and selfishness and attention seeking that a person has to have to think it is okay in any world to come out to students of any age. <sighs> but that takes us right into our next clip. Let's keep it moving. Here we go again. Just do your job. What does this, any of this have to do with teaching? Roll the film, please. Hey, TikTok, I need your help with something. And it's really important to me, and it's going to be a big deal. How does that feel, baby? <laughs> I'm coming out at work as trans to everyone, including all my students, who I've known some of them for a couple years now. But I'm going to be honest, I don't know how I'm going to address their question. I'm not good at this stuff. I'm going to ask them to start calling me Miss Ella and to use the proper pronouns. But knowing kids, especially elementary school age kids, they're going to ask questions and I want to make sure I have answers or the correct answers. She's a man. Now, did you guys hear what that... <laughs> Excuse me. Now, did you guys hear what that person wanted to tell his students? I'm going to ask them to start calling me Miss Ella and to use the proper pronouns. Wow! The land of make-believe! Going to tell the kids he's no longer Mr. Ella, and he's now Miss Ella. And the kids are thinking, what the f*** is going on? I just don't understand. I just don't... <laughs> Roll the film. Here's your little reminder. Non-binary doesn't look like anything. It doesn't look like a specific thing. You can't be non-binary correctly. Now, I need you to listen to me. I'm going to say that again. You can't be non-binary correctly. You can't be non-binary enough. You can't look non-binary in the right way. You look ridiculous. Oh, what is happening? In the last video, um, there was a TikTok of uh, a lovely young lady who demanded that white people don't go see Black Panther and Wakanda forever. I, said, I don't know. I don't know what she was talking about. I don't really care. Uh, I'm not going to see him. Don't worry. Um, here is another one fairly similar to that about Wakanda forever. Crazy. Roll the film, please. No woman, no this message is to all our would-be accomplices and white allies. This message is to all the white people who have BLM in their bio. If you really want to prove to black people that you love us and you care about us and you are down for the cause, do not go see that movie opening weekend. You buy your ticket. You give it to a black person or a black family who can't afford to go. And then you go sit at that theater in front of the doors. You make sure that every black person in that theater can enjoy that movie in peace. Don't raise it! 
Hey, where are the white women at? What a terrible, terrible human being. I love, uh, I love the part when she said, white people sit out front of the theater at the doors and make sure that the black people can enjoy the movie inside the theater in peace. R really? It's the white people that are causing any kind of unrest in the black communities? That's not what I'm seeing. I don't know. What do I know? <laughs> anyway, um, former Vice President Joe Biden recently said something. Um, it's a new thing that is racist, just like this news article from ABC News that you're seeing on the screen. Before I get into it, I got to give a huge shout out to the sponsors of today's video. Today's video is being brought to you by first sponsors are... Our great friends, Heather Hatch and the Boltonator. Heather Hatch and the Boltonator, thank you guys so much for all the continued love and support. Always greatly appreciated. You guys are amazing. Also, the Performance Clinic in Greenwood, Indiana. The Performance C Clinic in Greenwood, Indiana. Thank you so much for your generosity. I greatly appreciated. We also have an anonymous sponsor for today's video who did leave a message that said beware the savage lore of 1984 anonymous sponsor as well so thank you all so much for sponsoring today's video now if you'd like to sponsor the next video and help support the channel there is a paypal link in the description box below and i will say your full name as a sponsor of said video unless stated otherwise by you the article says america's national parks face existential crisis over race a mostly white workforce visitation threatens park survival and public health. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. How, how insane do you have to be to write an article like that? Now, I'm sure a lot of you have heard the story about the NHL, the National Hockey League. Uh, they said the National Hockey League is too white and they want to add some diversity into hockey now. Anyway, that brings us to this clip by former Vice President Joe Biden talking about, you guessed it, airline seats. Airline seats are now racist. Roll the film, please. Decision. Some airlines, if you want six more inches between you and the seat in front, you pay more money. But you don't know it until... You purchase your ticket. Look, folks, these are junk fees. They're unfair and they hit marginalized Americans, the hardest, especially low income folks and people of color. They benefit big corporations, not consumers. <laughs> That's racism, man. I love to racism, bro. <laughs> wow, these people are completely insane. That it just gets crazier and crazier by the day. Anyway, guys. We're going to be wrapping it up on this clip. Um, I had a few more TikToks I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to uh, let you guys know about the t-shirts and also show you guys some Halloween pictures. I'm having some Wi-Fi issues, so I'm going to wrap it up on this one. Don't worry. We'll save the rest for the next video. And there is plenty of content. It's like a big fire hose of content of this woke SJW insanity pouring down on us. So we're no shortage of content. So... We're going to end it here. So if you made it this far, give yourselves a round of applause, a pat on the back. You guys know I can't do this alone. So thank you all so much for trudging ahead. The greatest community on the YouTubes. Thank you, guys. Um, anyway, guys, remember, these people tell you that they, you can choose your gender or sex, whatever they call it. But if you want, choose who you want to date for a certain reason, then you're uh, fat phobic or racist. None of what these people ma say makes sense. It's, it's all just complete insanity. And that's, I've said before. That's the purpose of this whole silly little exercise is to create chaos and confusion. That's exactly what they're doing. Um, so anyway, guys, things are clearly getting crazy out there. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Till next time. Love you guys. Peace. Roll the film, please. Let's talk about dating preferences. This video was so good. You must watch it. And I want to branch off and talk about how it relates to fat phobia and dating. A lot of times when people are asked, why don't you date fat people, trans people, people of color, whatever, they will say, it's just a preference. I'm just not attracted to them. I can't make myself be attracted to someone I'm just not attracted to. The implication here being that preferences are innate, unchanging, and completely independent of any outside factors or societal norms. And therefore, that they are inherently unproblematic. Like, it's not fat phobia, it's just who I am. I can't help it. But I think it's actually a lot more complicated than that. 
our desires are not immune to social conditioning. Although, of course, you can't change your sexual orientation, when we see a certain type of body glorified, praised, and labeled as desirable in media from the time that we can even process those messages, it's not going to not have an impact on us. And the fact is, at least anecdotally, lots of fat people report being desired by many people. But the piece that isn't there is the social acceptance. And again, that's also true for other marginalized identities. Maybe you are sexually attracted to fat people, but you can't see yourself in a romantic relationship with one because you've never seen that replicated in media. Or maybe you love a fat person, but you're too afraid of what your friends and family would say if you introduced them. Or you're too afraid of what it would say about you to be with someone who is lower on the desirability totem pole. Uh, look, uh, look, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Eat vegetable! <laughs> Eat broccoli! And you ain't black. It don't